Now the structure to this week's episode of Gridman was a lot different than the first three episodes and I'll be interested to see how the fandom of Gridman takes to this episode because a lot of this episode is more or less high school nonsense and what I mean by high school nonsense is not that the content itself wasn't entertaining for me but what was happening in the episode of course will appear important for teenagers but in the grand scheme of things what they worry about the dates that they're kind of embarrassed to go on and they're just trying to hook up with someone like at the end of the day none of this matters but when you're in this period of your life you think it's the most important thing ever so I'll be interested to see how people take to this. Overall, I really enjoyed this week's episode of Gridman. Definitely wasn't as entertaining as maybe episodes 2 and 3, but it still served an interesting purpose in how they were kind of bringing Akane and Rika together as Akane is trying to figure out who the hell is Gridman. She's pretty sure it's Yuta. She has a good reason to believe, but she needs info, like why is Rika now suddenly talking to Yuta? So just trying to get that information out of her. And I have to say, the way she was kind of stalking her in a lot of ways, like just kind of appearing like, hey, let's talk about Yuta and just her tone because she's such a frightening character because of how easy it is for her to kill people without a second thought and how she puts on this face, this very cliche bubbly girl persona, but really she's a stone cold killer and that's who she is. And I love how when she starts popping in and talking to Rika, you're like, what's going to happen here? Because we know what this girl is capable of. The idea of her saying like, hey, we haven't talked for so long, let's hang out. That's naturally a reason for her to start hanging out with her and to get information about Yuta because she knows Rika has been in contact with Yuta a lot more recently. So I like how they're using this very typical adolescent scene of going on the group date, going to the karaoke bar, but it's actually serving a purpose for our main character and the character progression of these two characters because Rika is trying to figure out like why is it that wherever I am bad things happen and it makes sense that she wouldn't think Akane is the big bad in this world, that she's the one behind everything because there's no reason for someone to immediately think, hey, this person who I used to kind of be friends with or at least talk to is behind everything. Once she starts hanging out with Akane more and more and these bad things start piling on, then she should start expecting things like, hey, maybe this girl's actually behind it. But for right now, it makes sense why she's acting this way. And I just love just some of the comedy in this episode. Like, I think this episode will show you that the group here, this kind of like squad of Gridman, if you're having your doubts about how they would mesh in with the more kind of slice of life scenes, but also in battle scenes, I think this episode does a good job at showcasing why they're so great. I love how these characters are so blunt because they realize like these are just a bunch of high schoolers who are afraid to kind of ask the questions on their mind so they'll do it for them. I love that so much. It's just I love how they bounce around but also in battle like when they all attempt to kind of charge in together but the computer's so old and junky it can't handle it so then Rika has to unplug it to reboot it. Like the comedy in this episode I think was the best out of the four episodes. There was a lot of really funny moments that actually made me chuckle out loud. I think just the way these characters talk to one another and interact it just feels very natural but also has that anime charm of going a little bit too absurd that it just balances everything out and makes for a very entertaining scene. And just when you actually get to those final stages of just the beautiful animation of just the actual trans transformation in the 3D, just how much better the 3D is looking with each episode. And I mentioned it, it was either last week or the week before, how it looks like the 3D is mirroring the original version of Gridman, which were people in rubber suits, live action style. And it actually feels like the 3D is matching that and making it look like people in rubber suits just in animation. But the animation is getting more and more fluid and how they're hitting one another, these creatures, especially when it gets two on one. And then just those final shots were so goddamn beautiful, easily the most beautiful shots out of the four episodes of Gridman so far, but I do have to mention, because I really don't have too many criticisms for this show, as good as the final stretch of this episode looked, the overall feel and presentation to most scenes were pretty basic and underwhelming. There was a lot of static shots in this episode, and a lot of static shots that were just like, holy hell, this looks really, really bad. A lot of times people like to pause in between a frame and like clip out an in-between frame and say how bad it looks, but these are like the main keyframes that we're supposed to look at. And just the overall presentation to a lot of the character models, it felt almost like a different studio was animating it and how maybe this was outsourced or maybe they were just rushed for time so they couldn't polish it up as much as past episodes, maybe because they had such an amazing fight scene at the end of the episode that took priority. I'm not sure, but like I said, I don't have major criticisms for this show. So when something does bug me, I do got to make sure I mention it because overall the presentation was pretty underwhelming in this episode past the final stretch of it. But I will say, even with that said, when I think of this episode a couple weeks down the line, I'm not going to probably remember the general presentation. I'm going to say, holy hell, that fight at the end of the episode was amazing and one of the best animated things of that week. But once again, like Akane... She's such a great villain. I think she is the character that ties this show together so perfectly because she is just 
evil. Like, after that group date, the way she was putting on that face, and how she was, like, almost snapping mid-scene, but she just rushes away because she can't put up with the normality of these characters any longer, and then how immediately after, she's just, like, to her Kaiju was like, hey, kill these people. I just don't like them. Like, this girl has no remorse for killing, and I love how just insane she actually is. It makes her actually feel terrifying because you got this anime tropey personality who's actually just using it as a face to blend in with people to think she's just a nice girl when in reality she's killing people in her room as she crafts these horrible, horrible creatures. This episode was very interesting because for as much of a slice of lifestyle episode it was, it was actually doing this in order to show how these characters are kind of coming together, mainly Akane and Rika, and how they are going to kind of discover how they both relate to one another. Because right now they think they're just schoolmates, but really they're actually enemies on the battlefield. And I'm going to be interested to see how that translates more and more as these episodes go on. I hope we get to see more conversations that are just unnerving, like with what we got with this week's episode. But overall, a fun episode of Gridman. I can just say, like, no matter what, no matter if I have major issues with this show... I think I'm always going to have fun because it's just fun to see this over-the-top giant hero, giant monster, and how these characters are relating to one another and how they talk to one another. I definitely hope by the time the show wraps up, Yuta has definitely understood why he forgot his memories, why he's not so focused on regaining them, things like that, how all the characters are going to tie together. But right now, for episode four, four weeks in, I'm having a very pleasant time with Gridman. Very fun show. Can't wait to see more. Let me know whatever you thought of the episode down in the comment section below. Did you love it? Did you hate your favorite moment? What do you think of that beautiful animation at the end of the episode? Let me know and be sure to like the video if you did enjoy and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me in the future. But until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.